uh, is his mother-in-law, Edith. She went to the nursing home, then Margaret got this place. That's when they started the big renovation. And I That was in the 70s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, uh, I, think, I think Jim moved in in 76, I think it was, or 77, 76, uh -huh. I think. Right. Uh, about, about there, anyway. So yeah. what was what was this barn here or the shed? What was that used for here? That was just, I think, way back when. I think it was a buggy shed. Oh, a buggy shed. Okay. And then started walking. Russ he started to park his car in it many years later. Yeah. You coming, buddy? Yeah. Jane, he's kind of bored at home. Mom and Dad's working. Sister going to a friend's place. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so, and you said over here was a was a chicken coops, right? Uh, along here. Was, along here with chicken coops. Yeah, chicken coops, and then down from the corner there, down, just about to the end. Of, see where that there stuff was growing over the fence? Yeah. There was a big shed all the way down through there. And what was in that shed? Chickens? Well, no, oh. it was just empty when I came here. But I think at one time they maybe kept a few head of cattle or something like that. Oh, okay. In it. So, how many chickens would he have? I don't know because he he hatched chickens here. He had a bit of a hatchery. Hatchery? Did you sell the baby chicks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you? Did he also sell eggs? Like, no, I don't think he sold. He might have. I don't know. Uh -huh. Like Jim said, he's about fifty years ahead of his time. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Used to. Yeah. Uh, used to be a nice wire fence across here. So yeah, this used to be part of the school property. This was the school property over to the Chant with fence here. Right there. Right, right, yeah. to that tree right there. there. Yeah. And then it run right back to the racetrack, which is the back of your place there. Right. So you said that where these maple trees are, there used to be a path well, and a chain link fence leading back to the school. No, not a chain link oh, fence, yes. just a nine wire fence. Okay. Kind of fancy. You coming, buddy? Come on. Right. Uh, so back right here, by these trees here. Huh? I, yeah, we'll uh, see. It was just around here someplace. Would this be about in line with the school? Yeah. About here? Yeah, yeah about well, here. Well, there are the trees, yeah. So they would be here. here. I think this here could have been trees that was on the old walkway up to the school. Gotcha. So, no, you said you never went to this school? No, I never went. No. no. You moved here, how, how old were you when you moved into yeah, Newton? Ten. You were ten? Yeah. But you were finished with school by then? No, no. Oh. I went to school in Aurora. Aurora. And I came he, back and forth with my grandfather. He worked in Richmond Hill. Oh, oh yeah. okay. So uh, I came back and forth then. You got some stories about the old uh, store here? Yeah, the old general store. It, it was uh, used to be the post office. See where you walk through there? Yeah. From the store to the house, that used between, to be the post office. The post office area, yeah. Yeah. That was in between post. the two buildings? Yeah. Post office area. Set of gas pumps set here. Shell gas. Where, where is that? Where they see in that parking lot? Yeah. Oh, okay. The pump set. Well, see that fence there? Just about straight across from there was the island and then the, the two gas yeah. pumps. So who owned it at that time? Well, when I first came, it was Leonard Birch owned it. Leonard Birch, yeah. And then he sold it uh, to Earl Lennox about 1958 or so. Yeah. And then it changed hands three or four times. It was uh, Fred Trippy owned it for a while. Uh, Ed Rath owned it for a while. When did they take out the gas pumps? Well, they closed the store and everything in 1969. 69. Arnold, Arnold Reynolds closed the store in 1969. And, and they took out the gas pumps? And it was a bit after that huh. that they took the pumps out because I, forget, I can't remember the fellow's name, but made an antique store out of Hilltop yeah, Antiques. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He, so was, we, he was here for a long time. Yeah. So it was a general store up until 69? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, actually, 58, because after after uh, Earl Lennox bought it, he kind of renovated it. It took a lot of the front part out. Oh. And uh, that old brass till where you push the numbers down, and he put in an electric tree till. And, Put in a new counter and that sort of thing. Okay. Was there ever a, a bowling then, alley upstairs? No, not that I ever know. No, no, you know. Okay. Over here, that was kind of the oil ruby. Sold uh, fuel oil for in, in, for stoves. In that area there, by uh, where you did this with the slope roof on. Yeah. He used to walk in and out that door to serve gas. Okay. And then he kept his wire and. Uh, 
Oh, a lot of farm stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, oil. The oil for the, the, oh, okay. the oil for the cars is all kept in there. That sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we just had everything in there at that in them days. Yeah. I've still got some tools that I bought in there, in the 1960s. Oh. Now, what about this uh, red uh, barn over there? That's it. The story says it. That was the other blacksmith shop. So who ran that? I don't I have no idea. Oh, and when did it close down? Uh, I don't know that either. Oh. So when you were here as a 16-year-old working at Rose Farm, was it still a blacksmith no. shop? No. no it's it was not. just a garage for Lloyd Colburn's car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, that, we're going way back, maybe early 1900s. It's okay. just what I was told to me. That's what it was. Oh, okay. It was an old blacksmith shop. Right. And, uh, now, do you remember who used to live in the house next to the pottery, uh, to the general store? Right here? Yeah. The people who owned the store. Owned the people in the yeah. store used to? Okay. Yeah, the house went with the store. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when Jim got it from, uh, from Margaret, yeah. that their veranda, it, it had disappeared over the years, and then Jim put that all on there and walked around the veranda. Mm -hmm. He replaced that. Up top there, there used to be a, a bit of a balcony. With, that used to be a door up there, and you could walk out on a bit of a balcony. Oh. So you remember that when you were 16? or? Yeah, it was huh? still there when I came. Oh, okay, yeah. so that used to be a balcony up there. Okay. He's next. So th this line was severed off. Who yeah. severed off this line? Was it uh, well, Russell? Ru Ru Russell severed these here two lots off. off here. Yeah, okay. And then Frank out who farmed up here. Uh, now Frank was the father of Al? Yeah, he was oh. Al's dad. That, oh, yeah. uh, so Frank, uh, when he when he left the farm, he yeah he severed he, he Russell severed this and then Frank built this house yeah. and then a couple or three years later his uh, son Ralph set, uh, bought that lot and built that house there. So Ralph was uh, Al Houghton's brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was Alan Ralph. I think Ted was his brother. Okay. Think, and then I don't know if there was a sister or not, I'm not sure. So now when you say they built it, do they actually physically build it or do they hire well, they, a contract? They, they, they had it built. They had someone build it for them, okay. As far as I know. Right. Was it for your time? You coming, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Russell owned quite a chunk of land down here. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of, I lived in that little house, that's where I lived for. That house right there. Quite a while. It used to be a little room for brick house. So, who were you living there with? Sam Reed. Sam was an Irish fellow that came here, came to Canada about 1915 or 16, and lived out in the West. He on farms, and then he came down here, and he bought a farm up on the fourth line of Essa. In his farm, I guess. And then he sold the farm and bought this here little place here. So he was retired when he was living here or? No, he no. worked for a rule. He, oh, okay. He worked for yeah. Mr. Rule. Yeah. And then he sold it in 69 and uh, Stanley Ross bought it. And Stanley sold, well, Stanley's family sold it after Stanley died. So was Stanley, he used to work at the Rowe farm too, right? He lived all his life. Yeah. Was he, did you say he was the one that used to live above the uh, he lived above, above the, the garages? There. He yeah. was the foreman at the row farm for yeah, a while? Yeah, he was the boss there for a long time. And well, then we'll, If there was a boss. <laughs> right, yeah, okay. So what about this house here? This, what do you know about this old house? Who used uh, to live this in? belonged to Mrs. Brooks, a woman by the name of Mrs. Brooks. She owned that one and she owned that one. At one point. And huh? I think it was Sam that bought it from her when he bought it here. Okay. In so she, so Sam bought this house here. He bought it from her. She owned, from, it. She owned okay. the two of them. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so Mrs. Brooks, how long did Mrs. Brooks live here? She had it for a lot of years, I think. But yeah. She was a pretty old woman when I came here. So. Okay. Uh, in fact, I don't know as if she was even living here when I came or not. I don't know. You know, it might have been already been sold? It could have Someone? been. Okay. Yeah. I just go by what people tell me. Right, right. Yeah. And then uh, this here house, people from the city owned that when I was a kid. There used to be a little wee house here. Okay, yeah. A little wee house. People by name of Whitesides. 
Whitesides, oh, okay. They, yeah. they came up and just for a weekend retreat, kind of. Yeah. Had a nice little wire fence around, they grew a garden, and yeah. they come up and spend a few weeks in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what their names were? I mean, their first names? No. No. Because there's Whitesides in the cemetery here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Whitesides used to be a lot of Whitesides around here. Bondhead, there's a, quite a few Whitesides. Okay. This is Russell Copeland's house. Russell Copeland lived here. And uh, Russell and the wife, well, they raised the kids here. And uh, he was a trucker. He trucked cattle, livestock to stockyards. Yeah, so he was a drover, I guess. Yeah, call well, it, right? no, he's just a trucker. Oh, he's a trucker? Well, I guess you call him a drover. Oh. I guess he bought. A drover is somebody that buys and sells. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess he bought a few cattle, too. And uh, brought them home, and he had a big chicken keep up back. Oh, okay. I think it's still there. He kept it. He sold a lot of eggs. He had three floors of chickens there. And uh, he was he was the man if you wanted to, you wanted a bag of coal or a bag of chicken feed or anything from here. And Russell had it. So how long did Russell live here? All his life, as far as I know. Oh. Uh, and who owned it before? Was it? I don't know. That was it a family home, or you don't know? Yeah. I, don't, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. All I know is there in 1955 when I came up and they lived. And hmm. as far as I know, Stanley and Lawrence and his sister, they was all raised in this house. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Back to the, the when you first moved here as 10 year old, where was that? Where were you living? Right here. Right here. Yeah. That's the old house. That's the old house? Yeah. So, and you were living with, you said your grandfather? Well, I, yeah, I was back and forth with my grandfather. And he worked, he got a job in Richmond Hill and he used to bring me home at night and take me down in the morning. Okay, did he live with you? Oh yeah, my grandmother and grandfather and then my uncle, he had a bad accident in 55, broke his back, he lived here too. Okay, and did your parents too? Were your parents here? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Bud Poole is out here. Bud Poole? Yeah. So who was Bud Poole? He came from the west. And he was working for Lennox Row and he lost his legs in the bailer. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. How old was he when that happened? Uh, I can't be really sure, but I'd think he'd be in his early 30s. And you were here at the time? No. This oh. happened a year before. That happened in 1954 and we came in 55. Oh, okay. And that's where he lived? And yeah, no, no. he got this chunk here for the oh, Okay. Community. Got together and put the house on it. Okay. That there was a barracks from Camp Borden. That house there came from Camp Borden. Camp Borden. Oh. Yeah. And the community got together. I, when I was 11, 12, they got used cement blocks for the basement. Me and my cousin, we knocked a mortar off them out here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But go well, on back off the road, buddy. Yeah, Bud and the we are both gone now. And then they lived, Bud with his legs off, lived in a house, that house up there behind the trees. So what happened, they sold this house here, then moved up there? No, no. Oh. They built this, they moved from there, and then they moved down here when this house was built a year or two later. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there you can. That belonged to Mrs. Hughes. Mrs. Hughes. Ethel, Ethel Hughes. Her and her husband, they owned that house there, and they bought that one, and then they split up, and she kept that house. Okay, so, oh, no, oh and then they, okay, this house here, and no, then, the one, next to one next to it. Next to my grandfather's house. That was owned by Ethel Hughes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well, Tommy and Ethel owned that one, and then she ended up with this one. So now this, what, what do you got, what, what do you know about this place? Is it? This here. What's that? This here was the, the Lennox place, Mrs. Rose house. Ah, okay. Where that truck was, the driveway went up around to the back and there was a big shed there. Yeah. And, uh, oh, my uncle, he lived here and here. When he worked for Mr. Rose, he got the cow in there and huh. that sort of stuff. But you can't see it now for the trees. Yeah. Yeah. So this, when you're in your first story talking about the barn that was moved down to Ron Conrad's place, this is where it came from, this yeah. farm here, up behind up that house. Up behind this house, out in the field there. Right. Yeah. And it's down at Ron's place now. Right. Yeah. 
and that's the end of the other than the Mrs. Hughes' house there. Right. So what did the Hughes do? Do you remember? Do you know oh, what they? she was a she lived in Toronto, huh. and Tommy Hughes he was a thrasher. He thrashed, used to do community thrashing around. Uh -huh, okay. And uh, that was hundred years ago or more now. Right. I think it was about an acre and a half in that piece there. Okay. And then the Edneys lived up on the farm at the top of the hill. Oh, Edneys were up there, and then the Stoddards were there too then? No. Or never? No, it was always Edney? Yeah. That's the house, the White House up on the top? The White House, and then they built a house at the road there. Yeah. For Earl Edney's mother uh -huh. uh, before she died. But uh, you see, there, there's a big family of them. And when I was a kid, I used, to, I used to go up and hang out with Earl. Earl Edney? Earl Edney. Okay. Well, in fact, they, I think they built the house, and Earl, Earl and his wife lived in it at the road, and then the mother lived up, and a couple of sisters lived up. Yeah. Let me just see if I can uh, get a, see the house if I go. I think if I walk down here a bit. How large was the Lennox farm? How many acres? 100 acres or more? Oh, years ago they had the 200, at least the 200 acres here. Oh, okay. From the ninth line up to the tenth line. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that was Mrs. Rowe's dad. Dead mother had that. Right. And when you say Mrs. Rowe, you're talking about uh, Earl's, Earl's wife? Earl's wife. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with Earl Ledney up there, he uh, he had the farm and he's working in Schaumburg and used to come home for lunch, look after whatever he wanted to do. He's going back to work one day after lunch and got killed going to work. Oh, uh, how old was he? About 35, maybe. 35? Yeah. Earl. And he was uh, about your age at the time? Been Earl, old, he was your no, friend? He, he'd older, older than me. Okay. Yeah. But he was your friend? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I used to go up and hang out with him up there. Oh, okay. And, uh, Now, do you know anything about that swing uh, swing set over there? Well, people that was here before, they, I was just saying to Jaden, they had some grandkids. Yeah. And this year is an acre. My grandfather had an acre here. Yeah. And there's a creek that runs down through yeah. there. Well, it used to be down through. On that side of the creek, we never bothered. Just let it grow up. But the other people, they lawned it and took care of it. They had grandkids to put swings in uh, there. Okay. Now these year people, they don't bother. Yeah. So when did your grandfather sell this house? My uncle bought it in 19... Wait, say that again? <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather died in 67 and then my uncle, uh, my grandfather's oldest son, he bought it. Yeah. And they renovated and took it. There used to be a big shed out the back there and they took it off and they renovated the whole house. Okay, and when did he sell it? sold it, I'd say, early 1980s. Okay. He yeah. had asthma, they moved to Brampton. Yeah. And what was your uncle's last name? Ireland. Ireland? Yeah. Okay. My grandfather's in Ireland, Ireland? and then my uncle the okay. it in Ireland. But you know, is your grandfather buried in Newton Robinson Cemetery, no, or do you know? he's buried, buried in King City. Okay, yeah. why was that? Oh, that's where they come from, from originally. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll cross over, Flat traffic's clear. Yeah, oh, yeah oh. it used to be a creek. Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's water there. Yeah, we went right down through the property. Yeah. Yeah. Where did it, where did it come from? Did it come from the, the oh, creek down here, or? It comes from the springs over. Here. There's a spring or two over here. Okay, so there's a, a culvert underneath there's the road. Culvert under here. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying there's a spring over here on the on the Lennox farm there. Yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. In that bush there, someplace, and it feeds down. The house, the house next to it. It has a field up behind the houses. There's about four or five acres up in there. Yeah. The fellow that had the house there, he had horses. He had horses, huh? He had, he had paddocks up in there. Mr. What, what Mr. Was it? Kovac. Mr. Kovac? Yeah. Okay. And the Kovacs bought it from the Ferns. The Ferns lived there. Okay. Yeah. The, far, the Ferns, the Ferns, whatever. I think these English people. Yeah. But they were getting pretty old. And then the son from Brampton came up and 
they sold it and they took went to Brampton and then Mr. Kovac bought it yeah. and he trained horses at the down at the racetrack oh okay yeah down Woodbine and uh, they spent she just died there well did, was she still here when you came up I don't know yeah this here used to be a this here used to be a uh, stucco house okay uh, yeah, they've done siding on it two or three times. Yeah. I don't know what's happening in there now. Uh, I guess I see a chimney coming out here. It used to be a chimney. Right at, that used to be where that green thing is. It used to have a trap door down into the cellar, in huh? the basement. <laughs> yeah. Back in there somewhere. I think the old chicken coop, we, I kept chickens in there. You kept it? Oh, yeah. When I was a kid. Yeah. I can't see it now. I guess it's still there, buried up in the tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we had a white picket fence over the last time. Oh, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, quite a. This is the closest I've been to this house in 50 years, I guess. <laughs> But it looks like the old front stoop has never been changed. See this way it's breaking away? Yeah. Yeah. Just past that corner of the house right down to the about uh, 30 feet to the other side of that tree. Yeah. And this was the Kovac house. Kovac house, right, yeah. And they came up. He built that barn there. Okay. And where did he... Oh, that's horses, right? You said yeah. he had horses? Yeah. And then there's a little shed down there he kept horses in. Yeah. And then he had the paddock something behind the house. There. Right, yeah. 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 A lot of things has changed. Nothing can stay the same. No. So, what about this place? And then there's the garage. Then they built the garage about 1953, somewhere there. And then uh, he had sold Texaco gas to pump set right in the middle of the yard. Oh, Texaco, eh? And okay. he sold international harvester implements and tractors. And then he had the tow truck business. Yeah. And Bud, after Bud got his legs off, he went to school and he worked for Stanley for a few years, huh? uh, a mechanic. And then when Stanley sold, Bud and his brother-in-law bought it. They bought it and run it for two or three years. Yep. And then uh, it was sold and a fella came up from the city that made office furniture. And it only lasted two years. Yep. And he died with a heart attack. And the son didn't want any part of it, so they just sold it. And I don't know, it's kind of laid idle here, back and forth until Gary bought it. When when did Gary buy it? I, I can't be sure. Yep. Somewhere in the late 80s, early 90s, I would oh, think. Oh, okay, yeah, all yeah. right. Yeah.